are you ready for the coming of Jesus? Now, that's a very open-ended question. In order to get maybe a better answer, a more useful set of thoughts in your mind on the question, I want to just from memory, hopefully, go over a few texts that refer to what it's going to be like when that happens. The first text says that the return of the Lamb of God is going to be extremely supernatural and extraordinary. He says, who shall abide the day of his coming? Who shall endure when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. And he shall purge the sons of Levi. So you see in this picture of Malachi, he displays the return of Jesus as something like a fireball returning in great glory and fear. But then you have some texts like Matthew 24. Matthew 24 seems to depict the return of Jesus as being so sudden that no one, not even his people, will really catch drift of it beforehand. They're all going to go to work. He says, one will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. So you see, no one who's faithful to the Lord, if they can help it, is quitting their day job. And Conversely, none of the people that don't make it are quitting their day jobs because it says one is taken, one is left. So how do you make sense of this? On the one hand, you have Jesus returning in such fire that it says, who shall endure the day of his coming? Who shall, who shall be able to stand? And then in Matthew and Luke, it depicts it as so ordinary that it's like, a crack of lightning unexpected, just completely out of the blue. So now I hope you can better answer the question, are you ready for the return of Jesus? Because on the one hand, you should just be doing what you always do. And on the other hand, there are some helpful pieces of information in those texts that allow us to get more specific so Jesus warns that because his coming is going to be surrounded by ordinary things, we are called, as it were, to not be drunk on those things. He says, don't be carried away with dissipation. Don't be focused on the cares of this life in this world. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Jesus says, or no, Paul says, but still Paul speaking through the Spirit, that the present form of this world is passing away. And in 1 John, John says, this world and all of its desire are passing away. So if that indeed is the case, then you can't root your identity in this world. You can't root who you are in this world, even if you have some identities, some things in this world, like being a husband, a father, a wife, a mother. These can't be who you are. You have to be at your core and at your root who you are. Something not from this world, something from another world, from heaven, from God, from his presence. And if that's who you are, then you won't be drunk on the cares of this world. You won't be drunk on the things of this life. You'll be fully set so that even if you are simply going to work, you will be ready for the return of Jesus. And that is where you need to be. Thanks so much for those of you who tune in every week or whenever you tune in, we appreciate you. If you could do me a big favor, if you enjoyed this video, if it was helpful, like and subscribe. This will allow the algorithm to send this video out to other people so that they may also enjoy this content. Um, we're also a nonprofit. If you want to donate, we encourage you to do that. You do get a tax deductible slip if you're in the U.S. Have a good day. Bye.